Uh oh, there's another place on planet Earth that is occasionally producing too much electricity from its solar panels. Is this the end of the transition to sustainable energy? Should homeowners simply rip off their solar panels and go back to sucking on the teat of the fossil fuel industry? What say you, NBC News? Across California, it's a common sight. Rows of suburban homes topped with solar panels. But as the state works towards its ambitious clean energy vision, an almost counterintuitive problem has emerged. California is at times generating too much solar, meaning loads of good clean energy is going to waste. Good clean energy going to waste? Well, it's not just going anywhere, is it? It's not a piece of rancid old meat that you need to dispose of. It's just unused captured sunshine. Look, if you're concerned with a relatively small amount of solar energy going to waste, you're going to be furious when you find out how much our entire sun's energy goes to waste every day. You know, that nuclear reactor which still thankfully rises with regularity each day and bathes the surface of the Earth with 10,000 times the current global energy demand. That's around 44 quadrillion watts of power every day. It would take 44 million power plants to equal the energy coming from the sun. Now, what were you mentioning about renewable power going to waste again? Seems rather tragic that we are wasting the opportunity to capture all we need from our own little star, eh? The next time you hear the tragic story of throwing away unused renewable energy, just think of your own sun. Since solar power relies on the sun, it's often the middle of the day on days when it's not too hot that you can run into this issue of essentially having too much solar. People aren't home, they're not running their ACs, and the system can generate more than the state can use. This imbalance has been dubbed the duck curve. It's belly, the time of day when solar production can exceed demand. So that's the duck curve? That's the duck curve. Yeah, there it is. Inside California's independent grid operator, CEO Elliot Mainzer showed us how they manage the state's electricity in real time. There is solar energy right now that's essentially being thrown away. Unused solar energy is not being dumped in a landfill somewhere or sent to some other country to be disposed of. Shout out to the UK's pathetic plastic recycling scheme which manages to recycle at best a staggering 10% of everyday plastic. The rest gets shipped abroad, buried or burned. Bravo! I guess I'll have to make that uplifting video someday but back to this one for now. You know, the bottom line is that there are times when we do not have the demand for electricity for the full production of the solar fleet. Sometimes we're able to export it, and there are those times under certain extreme conditions when we do have to curtail it. When you say curtail, you mean throwing it away. Reduce generation, not throw away. If I was a baker, for example, and the demand for my delicious buns, baps or bagels was less than I was producing, I would have excess generation and something to throw away. Although, I'd offer it for free to anyone who wanted it. That might not have been the best analogy. Let's move on. When you say curtail, you mean throwing it away. We say uh, sending dispatch instructions to those fleets to, to reduce their generation, yes. In recent years, the amount of renewable energy curtailed, most of its solar, has skyrocketed, both from oversupply and so-called congestion, when there's more electricity than the transmission lines in some areas can handle. So far this year, the state has already lost out on nearly 2.6 million megawatt hours of renewable electricity, more than enough to power all the households in San Francisco for a year. To solve the problem, Governor Gavin Newsom's administration has been pushing to add more batteries to store that excess energy. Good! Batteries were the missing piece in the sustainable energy future, but now we have them. Rechargeable batteries fill up with wind or solar, for example, and discharge their load to the grid when needed. Batteries like these are used to balance the grid and stop the need of dirty, expensive peaker power plants that otherwise would have needed to be fired up during power demand peaks. If only there was a company to invest in that was at the forefront of battery storage for the entire planet. Oh, what's this has just popped up? Sawyer Merritt on X writes, This is how crazy Tesla Energy's battery storage deployment growth was in Q2 2024, up 157% year over year and up 132% quarter over quarter. This suggests Tesla's Lathrop Megapack factory is almost nearing full operational capacity, which is 40 gigawatt hours per year. Tesla's new Megapack factory, currently under construction in Shanghai, is also designed to have a 40 gigawatt hour annual capacity. This new factory is expected to start production in the first or second quarter of 2025. Tesla Energy is just getting started. 
Tesla are at the forefront of battery storage and produce the power wall for homes and the mighty mega packs for grid scale battery storage projects. Like this one I had a tour around a while ago, it's more interesting than you might think. Check it out after this video, I'll line it up to play next. And state regulators have taken a more controversial approach, drastically cutting financial incentives for homeowners looking to install solar. Before, we used to have people clamoring to put solar on. Ed Murray, who operates... Sorry, what was that, Ed? You got cut off. Before, we used to have people clamoring to put solar on. Ed Murray, who operates Aztec Solar outside Sacramento, says the impact has been devastating for his business. He's laid off 10 employees over the last year. We were left figuring out, how. what do we do now? Since the changes, there's been a 66% drop in residential solar installations and an estimated 17,000 green jobs lost statewide. <laughs> to make it cost effective, homeowners now need to install batteries in addition to solar panels. But that can cost an additional ten dollars to $20,000 or more. If you are a homeowner and plan to stay put, the installation of solar panels and battery storage might well pay for themselves over time as your energy bills disappear, along with your fossil fuel use and a nice warm fuzzy glow of energy independence becomes the new norm. No more power cuts thanks to your home battery storage. Power your electric car forever with your own sunshine capturing capabilities. Like getting a new kitchen, a swimming pool or building an extension, fitting solar and batteries and a heat pump will not only improve your home for the reasons I mentioned earlier, but it should increase its value too. You can't lose. It baffles me that some folks are opposed to electric cars, solar and wind power, battery storage. These are all real solutions working very well for millions of people today, yet are often attacked and undermined as being some sort of net negative. Let me know in the comments, why is that? Could these things be under attack from fossil fuel interests? I mean, what have they got to lose apart from trillions of dollars of profits from the oil industry? Huh. In a statement, Governor Newsom defended the state's policies, saying in part, no other state in America comes close to California's solar production. And now we're adding more batteries faster than ever to help capture that energy to use at night. Do you think California will be able to meet its 2045 clean energy goal? Absolutely not. No way we're going to get there without rooftop solar. New challenges casting a shadow on the path to a renewable future. Liz Kreutz, NBC News, Folsom, California. There has always been early adopters of new technology. Even today, if you drive an EV, have solar on your roof and a battery to store that energy for when needed, you are ahead of the curve. Indeed, it's people like you who are paving the way for cheaper solar, batteries, electric vehicles even. For these technologies are still in their infancy. As manufacturing scales, inevitable cost declines for all these products will allow for greater adoption of these more efficient technologies. That's the key point here, they're just more efficient. Economies of scale equals cheaper products in the future. So personally, thank you to anyone who's invested in this so far. For without you early adopters, we might never get to affordable solutions for everybody. Humanity is heading towards a sustainable, electric, energy abundant future, made possible by finally harnessing the power of our own sun. And companies like Tesla are at the forefront of this electric revolution. Beware of such morons who think that somehow Tesla is their enemy. I can't even just <laughs> if you thought that report was slightly negative towards renewables, you ain't seen nothing yet. Here's a BBC report that I discussed recently with its headline grabbing Spain sparks fears of energy industry crisis as renewable supply exceeds demand. See if you can spot the fear mongering terror presented by the good old BBC. Thank you, Patreons. Thank you for watching. I'm Will. This is the Tesla Jigsaw. Bye for now.